this site uh, just between Moira and Lurgan, which appears on lots of historical maps uh, as having something of interest here, but then sort of has nothing. So we've done a few reconnaissance trips here, uh, just looking at the landscape and ground penetrating radar, which has focused us quite well into a couple of locations here with features, linear features in the ground, let's call them like that. One of which has a right angle in it, so it could be a building or the intersection of two ditches or other linear features. And the, another one which, uh, which crosses it and is far larger. Um, so it's presumably later, but how much later, you, we couldn't tell. It could be 700 years later, it could be seven years later. Unlike uh, other surveys where we're also using electromagnetics, including a type of metal detector, we are only using ground penetrating radar here because it looks like there's no significant metal in the ground either to worry about or to be as archaeology. So it's just non-metallic features. So that's roadways, buildings, burials, trackways, those sorts of features uh, in the subsurface. And the ones we've got are at about 80 centimetres to 1.2 metres in depth. Nothing much shallower, nothing much deeper. That too is quite informative. If it was all really shallow, someone did something here quite recently and the landowners would probably remember. Something really deep is geology, uh, but it's in the right sort of range for something archeological. It's the town land that this, this farm uh, is part of is Dunny Gray. It was part of the Brownlow estate, which was granted in the early 1600s. Dr. McCarry had nailed down as far as he could to be satisfied about the origin of the name Dunny Gray, was the Gaelic Do Nach Reich, which translates as speckled church. Well, if, if we do find something more definitive here on the land of the archeology span that's currently been conducted, we may, may well find that there's some trace of a church and, and to the name of Kilmahomog, which is associated with this field. The reason I know it isn't actually through my great uncle, it was through his housekeeper, Mary, because she, she, she came to this farm as a maid, maybe when she was 13 or 14 years of age, and stayed here, she was here the rest of her day. So she's the one from whom we heard that name, Kilmahomog, and, 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 and it mean, it, for the meaning of that church of my little cool man. So this, uh, this field is known as Kilmacolomog, which is the church of my little coalman. And there is a long sort of local tradition that there is a graveyard in this site. Uh, and if it's a graveyard, it should be associated with a church and consecrated ground. So there's a long tradition here of a, basically potentially an ecclesiastical structure or an early medieval settlement. Um, last year, Alistair Ruffle of Queen's University did a geophysical survey across here and he picked up a long geophysical anomaly running down the hill and then turning. Uh, we were invited to come do the excavation to try and ground truth that and to find out a bit more about the site. This here is, an is basically an initial test to see about the viability of the site and if there is definitely stuff here. Our trenches have uncovered uh, remains. They, they're small, effectively knife cuts into the ground and it would be great to come back here for a further season to maybe open a large wider area to clarify what's going on and also when we're doing that, part of this is to get the community involved with their heritage. And so far for this, basically this small week long excavation, we've had a phenomenal response of over 20, 20 volunteers a day, basically. And then all the other people that have been coming in in between them, just visiting the site and inquiring what's going on on social media, it's been great. So I think next year, or even the year after, if we had a further season, we could definitely ground truth some more of this, find out exactly what's going on, clarify if it is an early church site and the, basically the place names and the local tradition is marrying up with what's in the ground. But there is definitely stuff here 
and it would be great to come back and do another dig and bring more people down, get school groups involved, get more local people involved and open a wider area and it would just be really beneficial. Um, initially when we came out here uh, there was pot there is local tradition that there was actually a graveyard here so actually for the start we were looking for um, the presence of an early medieval church uh, we haven't had any evidence of that yet but we do have possibly an early medieval sudorian um, which would be more akin to that time period but isn't the church itself uh, we've had some lovely finds and this is some nice sudorian ware which uh, would obviously be related to our sudorian and would be early medieval in date but we've also had some finds which are prehistoric in date and that includes nap flint and also some prehistoric pottery. So when we're looking for an apt flint we're looking for any sorts of um, nice wee flakes that have come off it or bulbs of percussion as well, little lumps in the in the flint which is really interesting because it does show that there was people here from long before there was ever a church, uh, possibly dating back to about 4000 BC. So any of the pottery we have found um, like the sudorian ware that sort of is an example of day-to-day -day life and what it would have been like. So these are just sort of domestic vessels um, that would have been used for cooking and things like that. Community archaeology is incredibly important. The local people excavating here today from all ages, um, this is their heritage, this is their history that they're uncovering. So they're very hands-on. It's an incredibly important part of archaeology to get the community involved in what is, as I say, essentially their own history. Um, well, this, this small trench was opened up to see if we could find any more sort of prehistoric stuff. We had a little, a little trench up on the top of the, of the mound there, and we found some prehistoric pottery, some uh, struck flint. Uh, struck flint is flint that has been worked to make tools from it. Basically, they're, they're cutting edge. So we, we opened this trench to see if we can find anything else uh, like that in here. And we have found an, another couple of bits of, of flint and things like that. So other than that, um, it's, been, it's been pretty sterile. There's, there's, not, there's not much there. And we're down to the subsoil now. The subsoil is the, the glacial till that was created when the ice sheets were retreating. So there's nothing human underneath that. So that's where we stop. I heard about the dig on Facebook and I'm a big history fan and I just had to come down and it's my local town, Lurgan, and I had to see what's in the ground here. Yes, and I heard about it on Facebook from a friend and I thought I would come along and see what's happening underneath the soil here and see what we could find. Well, we have found pottery, some teeth, boar teeth, teeth, boar teeth. teeth uh, more bits of pottery. A lot of flint. A lot of flint. Yes. A few scrapers. And a lot of holes and stones that look like they've been man-made. Yes. Uh, it looks like a door post and a few other pieces of worked stone. Yep. It's been like a dream for me. I've uh, been wanting to do this since I was a youngster and doing it now, it's absolutely amazing. I can't believe it, it's brilliant. Yeah, this is definitely one off my bucket list. I've always wanted to do an archaeological dig. Um, I've been fascinated with the subject since I was very young. And uh, just to do this is it's the most amazing thing. When you find something, you just want to keep on going and improve on it and see what else is next under the soil. Mm -hmm.